introduce the next presenters. Yeah, so we are very grateful to have um, two outside presenters here. Um, the first one is Tom Zanzillo, who's the Director uh, of Financial Analysis for the Institute of Energy Economics and Financial Analysis. He has produced uh, influential studies on oil and gas, petrol and coal sectors in the US and internationally, including company and credit analysis, uh, facility de development, oil and gas reserves, stock and commodity market analysis, and public and private financial structures. He examines uh, such areas as community and shareholder activism, institutional investment, public subsidies, and Puerto Rico's energy economics. With a wide experience in public policy, regulation, budget planning, and government operations, uh, Tom has testified as an expert witness. Hot energy finance, spoken at major conferences and events, and is frequently quoted in leading business and broadcast media. He also has 17 years of experience with the city and state of New York in senior financial and policy management positions. As the uh, first deputy controller of the state of New York, he oversaw the finances of 1,300 units of local government, uh, the annual management of 44,000 government contracts, that's a lot, and over 2 billion, 200 billion in state and local municipal bond programs, as well as 156 billion global pension fund and administration of about 1 million member retirement system. So Tom, thank you very much for joining us and the time is yours. Yeah, oh, thank you for um, <clears throat> inviting me. Um, let's put this on. And, um, um, my, uh, I was um, glad to see the last budget presentation because I, I having spent a lot of time in government, I um, understand that the um, achieving the kind of uh, success that you've achieved in the, in the financial, it doesn't come easy and, and, and it requires attention to every little detail. Um, and that's what I, I want to try to do here with you today is to talk about the financial case of divestment and why um, uh, many funds are moving uh, towards it. Um, and um, just to let you know where my organization has in, been doing this kind of work. Well, I've been doing it for about almost 20 years and uh, the other, um, we've um, been doing this as an organization for about 10 and we're in 30 countries um, looking to work um, on uh, fossil fuels and alternatives and sustainability. Next slide, please. Um, what, what I want to do is sort of, because there's a lot of execution questions and you're a lot of you are practitioners, uh, I wanted to start with a minute uh, just to talk about what this is. Um, divestment really is asking of, of um, um, uh, fund and managers and fund uh, fiduciaries to look at um, ridding themselves of one way or another of some level of fossil fuels, and I'll get to that in, more in a minute, or restricting new investments, always meeting your return targets and doing what Dan said of minimizing your fees through diligence. It's a defensive measure to protect you against losses. That's what it is. Next slide, please. Um, 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 many funds have been doing this for the last 10 years. Um, it's now up to about 40 trillion where funds are taking one form or another of divestment depending on their philosophy and the perspective of the fiduciaries who run the funds. Next slide. Started off small, little university funds, churches. It's now grown. Next slide, please. The New York State Common Retirement Fund is the fund I was in, in charge of for many years. Um, the University of Maine, very tiny fund, um, um, has uh, moved towards it. Next slide, please. Many uh, insurance companies, pension funds, universities, asset managers like um, BlackRock, who advised the city of New York, um, and I'll talk a little bit about what their studies were showing, 
because they did surveys of um, uh, detailed surveys of funds that had divested them where they came up on fees and returns. Um, next slide, please. And the reason for the argument is a financial reason and that the energy sector over the last uh, oh, 10 years or so um, has been in trouble and it remains in trouble and it looks like it will continue um, um, going forward as a negative outlook. Um, we've seen some recent uptick from the um, intervention of uh, uh, Russia into Ukraine, which caused a spike in the prices. Next slide, please. Um, but you'll see that over time, um, the industry is going, um, is um, losing market share. And what this chart shows you is that in 1980, um, which is what I think most of us think about when we think about the oil and gas industry, they were 30% of, of the Standard & Poor's 500. Today, they are 4.7% of the Standard & Poor's. And before Vladimir Putin invaded, the Ukraine, they were, it was at 2%, and there was an uptick in the market from that invasion and, uh, and the, and the um, disruption that that caused in the markets. Next slide, please. What this one shows is it goes back into the, um, into the 90s. This, the um, the, this, the uh, circle there, um, shows the where the um, energy sector, the blue line, actually drove returns, the financial returns um, all over the world. And they did that for quite some time and they were number one in the markets and they made a major contribution to the kinds of funds that I've managed. In fact, I uh, was a um, significant, my fund was a significant beneficiary of the fossil fuel sector for many years, as you can see, that no longer is the case. The blue line now represents the um, energy sector and the pink line represents the Standard & Poor's 500. Next slide, please. This is another way of saying the same thing. Uh, the green box is the energy sector and all the other boxes are the other sectors in the Standard & Poor's 500 leading up to um, 2021. Um, you have a, um, you can look at the bottom and you see that in five of the 10 years, the sector was in last place and in eight of the 10 years, it was below lagging the market as opposed to what I was showing you before where they were dominating the market. Then with Putin and the end of the pandemic, you have two years of, um, of, um, uh, of uh, positive returns um, and you now are back lagging the market next slide and when they were able to when putin did inv invade this is what that red line is the energy sector and the rest of the economy um in 2022 um didn't do very well um and that's what happened when that invasion took place in the markets next slide come 2023 as the markets start to absorb it the energy sector winds up where? Last place again. Why is that? And now they're doing slightly better in the last couple of months, but they're still lagging the market as they have for the last 10 years. Why is that happening? Next slide. It's happening for three basic reasons. Um, we're seeing um, um, changes in competition, which I'll go into in a minute. And we're seeing um, competition among governments as well as market competition that the industry has never seen before. And so over that 10 year period, this chart shows you that the energy sector, it's another way of showing you the same thing. The energy sector has underperformed the markets for a decade. And this is even with the Putin bump. This is their accumulative uh, chart. Next slide, please. This is another way of looking at it, where the MSCI index of fossil fuel, the, the, um, the uh, all country world index is compared against the all country world index without fossil fuels. It's a mirror fund. 
Um, so what you have over the over the period from 2010 to the present is the um, MSCI excluding fossil fuels is um, doing slightly better, but obviously not worse, which is what many people will tell you. Next slide, please. As I said, the reason for this is competition, competition among the producers. Most of the producers for fossil fuels and oil and gas in the world are state-owned enterprises like Russia, Saudi Arabia, Norway, and, uh, and uh, many others. Um, and they have um, um, been in the last 10 years competing against each other in new and different ways, partly because of the United States um, producers who were able to increase production considerably because of fracking, which you may have heard of, um, that has catapulted the United States um, producers um, to number one in the world, which has caused a whole lot of competitive pressures, um, and particularly among with Russia and Saudi Arabia. And, and we see a lot of the political tumult as a result of that. But you're also seeing more importantly, the market forces. Next slide, please. That was uh, the governmental one. The next one is, I think, uh, more important for the markets uh, and looking at the outlook. Next slide, please. The energy sector has three uh, parts, transport, electric, and petrochemicals. In each of those sectors, uh, they are losing market share, and they don't have a plan moving forward. Um, to um, absorb or, uh, or make up that market share. That's why they went from 30% down to where they are now. They are losing out to competition where they traditionally have had a monopoly. Next slide, please. So are they prepared um, to meet this? And this is when I was talking before, when BlackRock did its study for the city of New York, it looked at the transition and whether or not the companies, the oil and gas companies were uh, capable of handling the competition going forward. And they determined um, that they weren't. And most of the funds that have now opted to move out of uh, 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 fossil fuels in one way or another have come to that conclusion that they don't have a transition plan. And we do um, analysis all over the world on this. And I would be more than willing to go through with you in great detail. But their major premise, the oil and gas industry's major premise is they have a few technological um, um, items and they're um, um, right now not commercially uh, possible to do. And so there's a lot of different ways that they're trying to do investments and get public subsidies and what have you. But right now they don't have a plan. Next slide, please. Um, the one major one is called carbon capture and sequestration. We've analyzed this um, all over the world and, we're see and we have engineers and we have scientists and we have um, people who are, who are capable of looking at the energy side. The United States government accounting office has been looking at, uh, accountability office has been looking at this for 30 years and has yet to find a project that they have found worthwhile. This is the major um, investment strategy of the industry going forward, which is why we see a negative outlook Next slide, please. The money that's being invested um, going forward, they're not moving into um, uh, new areas that are sustainable. This is showing that a lot of the money now is going back to shareholders, probably where it should be if they're not going to be investing. But most of the money still remains in traditional oil and gas, um, partially because there still is some profit there, but it's very volatile. It's a, high, it's a much more speculative stock, not the blue chip stock that we're all familiar with over many years. Last, next slide, please. And so um, we just look at this and say the um, past is, under, is showing dramatic underperformance, not anything like it used to be. There's competition in the market and amongst the countries. There's no promising innovations going forward. And so there are many places that are looking to do this divestment. I wanna end on one thing as a public official now, as you as public officials, um, this is not fun what you're being asked to do. Um, the, um, you're being asked to ask the right questions. That's what a fiduciary does. Um, and you have to ask the right questions and you have to make an independent decision as fiduciaries about what to do here. 
it's not your um, advisors per se who can really make this one for you. You have to do it yourself. You also have another function, a leadership function as university leaders. And that means you don't get to choose whether or not you're gonna do something on uh, climate change or not and how you're gonna deal with it. Because as a person who was in government for a long time, I didn't get to choose the issues either. And I would much prefer not having to deal with climate change when I was managing a pension fund. And I would imagine that you don't wanna do it either. And I don't blame you because it's too darn hard um, to do it. But that's what we have and that's the cards that have been dealt. The university obviously has another responsibility to its students and as leaders, you're obviously an example to them as to how this gets remedied and how, what steps are taken um, um, to address this issue. Um, and so I leave you with the one question that I would ask you to ask your advisors. Um, and that is, um, what would your profile look, your, your, uh, your investment profile look like if it was designed to meet targets and divest. Thanks. Minute, I got, I got, got you a minute back. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs>